Young at Harp. I'm Devorah Henson Conan, and I'm here with Kathleen Wiley. And today we're going to talk about where am I when I'm not all there? Now, Kathleen is a Jungian psychoanalyst, and I'm a composer and a performer, and every week we come up with a question that we want to explore, and then we share the exploration with you. And uh, we are now on a platform where I we often can see your chatting with us. So it's lovely um, when you do, when you have questions, and we have this question that we want to explore. So Kathleen, this morning, you know, as I was thinking about what do we want to talk about it, and I was feeling kind of spaced out, and yesterday I was like totally spaced out. And this morning I thought, well, where am I when I'm not all there? <laughs> and then when I mentioned it to you, you used the word presence. Mm -hmm. And that is a word certainly that has a huge impact as a performer and also a huge impact in our lives. And I want to talk just briefly about the impact that it has as a performer, because I just were in, in my academy, we're just in between two classes right now. And we just completed a class that was um, called Baroque Flamenco Beyond the Page. And so everyone was learning to make their own version of a particular piece of music. And right before that, we'd been in a class called Strings of Passion, which is all the principles of creative impulse to creative um, expression. And what I noticed about myself, and I notice also in, in all the members of the academy, is that we can learn, 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 learn something. Like when I'm getting ready for a show, if I invent, if I'm making a new show, and I get to the very last day, and I, um, you know, I, of course, haven't done all the things that I meant to do. I didn't write the horn parts, and I didn't do this, and I haven't memorized it, and whatever. By the, you know, like four hours or something before the show, I'm this far away. But this is a wide way away from being ready. And there is nothing more I can do technologically to get from here to here. But in that space that looks like it can't be filled, if I bring in presence, what's really missing to connect with an audience and it can be done at any moment, at any time, is to pull in presence, mm -hmm. to let go. And this is, this is what I call liftoff in the strings of passion. It's that moment when you combine um, surrender with action, when it's like, but because you're completely and absolutely here. That's what I love to get to. And it's, it's that moment when you're like, oh, I'm not going to do that. And I'm not going to do that. And I'm not going to be able to do that. And I'm not, and, and you're just like giving up, giving up. I mean, that's not going to happen. That's not going to happen. That's not. And you get down to like, and this is what's here. Mm -hmm. And then you show up. And the difference between what it's like before you give up everything that you aren't and the moment when you embrace what you are changes everything. Mm -hmm. It goes from being something that maybe I'm trying to prove to myself to an actual connection. Mm -hmm. So when I feel like I'm not all there with myself, I'm wondering what's going on? What am I not giving up? Where am I not connecting? Yeah, this is such a great question because we deal with this all the time and people come into my office for analysis and, you know, th they feel like they're either outside of themselves, beside themselves, above themselves looking. I mean, we ha have all of these phrases in our um, in our common language that describe this phenomena of not being all there. And um, I'm getting ready actually to start an essential embodiment practices class and um, online sacred circle to really work with this. How do we cultivate the reality that we are all there, but what's missing is our consciousness and our ability to hold it all simultaneously. So I just want to talk for a minute about layers. I think of our psyche and our body mind as being the same thing. It's the essence of who we are, both energetically with the life force that some people call spirit or the divine and our body, the matter, the cellular consciousness we are.
And in my understanding, they're both the same thing. They're just different densities of the same energy. And with you mean yeah. like you mean like water being water can be um, in a you know it can be steam, but it can yes. also be water, but it can also be ice. Yes, but, but, but it's it the sounds, same thing. But it, but it sounds like you're and it sounds like you're saying that these two things, these two states, I mean, water is usually in either one state or another. And it sounds like you're saying these two states exist together and resonate with each other. Absolutely, because ice is still water. It's just frozen water. It's water in a different state. Steam is water, but it's mm -hmm. evaporated particles that might not be the right science word right right i mean it's, it's in its yeah. gaseous form it's in its yeah. solid form liquid form or gaseous form yeah so it's all the same substance but in different forms so within our psyches within our being within our makeup we have our physical form our emotional form our mental form and our spiritual form the spiritual form being that life force essence that is the thing that keeps us alive that when we quit breathing, we no longer take in. That's just one way to think about our spirit. Then we have the mental body, which are all of our desires and the meaning we make of that and the beliefs that come up around it. Then we have our emotional body, which is all of those impulses, affects, emotions that are just right there. And then we have the physical body, which is the action, the cellular consciousness, the cellular knowing. Our consciousness, self-consciousness, our ego sense of self has difficulty seeing those four simultaneously. So for instance, you're getting ready to do a new show and physically you're probably in a little adrenaline overdrive because you're giving birth and emotionally you've got some anxiety and some excitement going and mentally you're tending all these details and how are you going to do the things you want and the desires you have to express how are they going to get expressed the form and then you've got this creative energy that's the life force behind you and sometimes we just get caught on one plane and when we get caught sometimes in the creative urge or the mental urge we aren't at all aware of our body and what's going on and so then we don't feel all there kathleen as you're talking and as you said these four things um and you're just about to start this class and i'm just about to start the summer of improv and i just and the summer of improv has four elements they're the four sort of con concepts in jazz that all work together and exactly the same thing happens so those are rhythm um, melodic improv um, harmony and um, and the roadmap. So mm -hmm. when we're playing, when we're playing, we're playing a roadmap, meaning meaning a piece exists in time and it has a line in time. And I don't even know if this apparently this isn't on mm -hmm. or it's not plugged in. Oh, it's got unplugged. Um, so so I, I'm I'm gonna pick Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. I know I always pick that, but it just it's something everybody knows. And so. <laughs> So let's say that's a whole long tune. Um, but there's all these other elements that we can get lost in. Like people can get lost in, oh, what's that melody? One, one, five, five, six, six, five. You know, what is what is the shape of the melody? What is the harmony of the melody? C as F and C, D minor, G, whatever, whatever it is. And then there's and we can get lost in, in that, or we can get comfortable with that. And it's fine, we can ex execute that. But then as we're starting to develop our creative expression, which you can do with any tune or with anything, that like that's what I'm gonna be teaching this summer. What can we then do with that? Can we add harmony? Like... Now I just change the harmony or I can change the melody. I use the same harmony underneath. I change the melody. I can change the rhythm. Now I changed kind of all of them together. 
this reminds me of what you just said about all the, because these are different. You can learn, like people will be learning these skills. We're going to learn the skill of the roadmap. We're going to learn skills of rhythm, learn skills of melodic improv. But what, but if we get lost in any one of them, which will happen as we're learning them, mm -hmm. we're not getting the benefit of what happens when they come together. Yes. And, and, and then we can express ourselves in the moment. Yes. You, you said it beautifully. Those four components of jazz, and I've got to make sure I do this with you this summer. <laughs> Those four components, when they come together, is the magic of music. These four worlds of our own being, our own self, when they come together, is the magic of who we are as an individual. Well, I you you said it's the magic of music, and I just want to say I think it's the magic of self-expression through music, and I think that, you know, what what you're talking about is also self-expression. Probably, I'm assuming through many different things, yes. you know. And this is just a specific. Yes, yeah. In fact, what we're both doing, I'm aware aware of, is you're taking and you talk about this in Hip Hop Academy. There's a gym you go to and you work out, and right, right. I'm talking about these embodiment practices that we're going to be working with as um, like going to the psychic gym. If you build the muscle, then when you need the muscle, it's there. It's just like we go to the gym, start out with one pound weights, go to three, go to 10, go to 15, go to 20. And then then I can lift the bag of mulch I want, you know? Oh, I got it. Yeah. yeah. Well, in other words, we, it, 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 it comes to bear in the moment. Something's come together and integrated I see. So I see what you're saying. And I was making a joke, but you were saying, you know, you live, you lift this and let you lift it, this so that I can engage in my garden. Yes. And uh, one of the things that I love uh, about what you just said is that when we're like in the summer of improv, which is just about to begin in the academy, it's all about a relationship with this, with this, this machine which to me, which is like a garden or like anything else that you're engaging with. To me, it's very personal, not because it's a harp, but because it's a machine. Because ever since I was a kid, my relationship with machines, whether it was a bicycle or it was an old typewriter or, or any, the machines were like beloved to me, mm -hmm. which is why I, that was the one th that was the first thing I loved about the harp. And also the relationship of a human to a tool is very um, be a beloved thing to me. It's like the relationship of a human to a pet. Um, but tools mm -hmm. I have this passion for. Um, so what I think is beautiful about what we're both talking about is learning these practices to engage with either ourselves or something else so that we become deeper, more resonant, more engaged, more present. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. So back to this question, where am I when I'm not there? And I think we're starting to answer. I mean, we didn't know the answer when we mm -hmm. started. Um, so I think we're answering what I'm hearing us is answering that by where are we? How, well, how do we get to that presence or how do we, yeah, well, so let's just circle back to another um, image for a minute. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the the energy people and people who see auras and the magnetic fields around our physical bodies talk about that we all, our energy, our life force actually extends to about an arm's length all the way around us. So there is this sense then from an energetic perspective that the essence of who I am is not just my body, but it's somehow this magnetic field that also holds my body. In psychology, consciousness means a content is known to the ego. And ego, by definition, is defined as the sense of self we have from what we know of what we've experienced. But the reality is there is an unconscious. There's our conscious self, and then there's the unconscious. All that is automatic, reflexive, 
unknown that really is the larger reality of, of who we are. And throughout the ages, people have referenced this larger reality as being somehow an expression of the divine. You know, the Judeo-Christian scripture says we're created in the image of God, that somewhere there is this largerness. Some people talk about it as the soul. So I think part of what we have to begin to, to answer the question, where am I when I'm not all there, is we have to define our definition of I. <laughs> well, yeah, I was thinking of that because I'm, I'm always thinking of maps. I love this image of like, you are here. This, th I love this always. And as I was thinking about this, I was thinking when I'm not all there, it's like a map that says you are here, but then there's also, or maybe here, or maybe here, or maybe here, or maybe here, or maybe there. And, and so that was one thing that I thought of was just that, but where am I? And then the other thing, when you said this largerness, and then I also thought then, and then there's also a, a tiny, tinierness or what I used to call mere, the mere of me, the, 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 the not all the this and that and what I do and blah, blah, but, but the mere, the mereness of me, um, which is this, I don't like the word precious, but yeah, I don't even know well, what that word means really. So, well, but when you say that, what comes to my mind is I often refer that to that as the still point within Okay. It is that place where we are one with our essence in its purest form. And that's the mereness. And so, it, and for me, it's the divine spark that we are. You know, I think of us all as a divine spark or a divine ray of the divine right. essence. And that mereness is the still point. It is that divine spark from which everything else we experience as us, everything we experience as not us flows. So if we think about where am I when I'm not all there, then part of what may be going on is out of, from that center point, that still point within, some part of me has gotten way over here in an interaction with my husband that's still got me stirred up. And then there's another part of me over here with this creative project I'm doing, like I was before we got online <laughs> over here. And then there's this other part of me back here five years ago about something I haven't let go of. And in truth, when we feel like we're not all here, it's usually because we've got these little bits of energies gone out to all of these things that really have nothing to do with this moment we're in. <laughs> and so mm. stopping like we did before we started and doing one of my favorite exercises, which is just seeing all these little golden threads coming out of my solar plexus, going to these things, and I just gently pull them back in. I just pull that energy back into my solar plexus. And I'm, I know for me, when I present or when I go to perform a play, the harpist performance, mm -hmm. when I stop and do this, mm -hmm. then I experience what you call the liftoff. The, the presence is when we stop and just say, okay, I'm just pulling it all. I'm here in this moment. And I'm going to trust in this moment if all my energy is here, then something beautiful will unfold or something interesting will unfold <laughs> or, or something that wants expression, even if it's ugly, will unfold. And so the where am I when I'm not all there, we begin to realize we aren't all there when we leave these little bits of our energy in other places. But yet it is still somewhere connected and to us. And when we can just breathe and pull it back in, we have that presence and that sense of self that we experience when we say, I'm all here now. 
Yeah, um, I'm listening to you and I'm realizing I'm not all here now because I was wondering, like, can we actually be heard? Because I am I was doing the tech and I was just like, God, did I even do the tech right? Like, can, but Elizabeth just said, we need to come back to our root. Thank you, yes. Elizabeth, because you just told me, A, apparently I did the tech right enough <laughs> that you can hear because that's beautiful. Yes, come back, go back to the root because that's the thing that goes deep into the ground to get everything to help us with. Yes. And um, I was, you know, I was thinking as you were speaking when I wasn't being preoccupied um, that, sorry, and I'm thinking about the word preoccupied. I was thinking two things. I was thinking, oh, I, oh, now they're all over my head. Um, that, that one of the things that, that, because I'm teaching skills that are, I'm teaching skills and I'm teaching concepts and hopefully teaching concepts in a way, because concepts, every concept holds infinite skills. Mm -hmm. The concept of harmony, the concept of how our harmony is built, that is built on triads, or that is built on, that is built like that, that's kind of all you need to know to start exploring. But, but, and yet it's very helpful for us to get specific skills. As we're engaging with those skills, if we are assessing ourselves, then we become completely preoccupied. Like right now, I was assessing, yes. did I do this right? Did I do this wrong? It, 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 what, what's, what's coming across versus my intention? And at the same time, I was thinking, what's valuable here? I keep going back to our first conversation, or maybe maybe it was our second or third, mm -hmm. but the moment, uh, and I always remember exactly where I was, and I was reaching out for some reason to your um, glove compartment in your car, and we were having a conversation, and, and I was thinking, this is a conversation I want to keep having. Mm -hmm. I, want, I want to explore this over and over again. And so when I, at the same time, I was preoccupied with like, did I do this right? And what does my hair look like? And blah, blah, blah. Part of me was pulling me back to that. Wait a minute. I want to have this conversation, whether anybody else ever hears it, whether it, whatever, whatever happens to it, this is a conversation I want to have for me. <laughs> and that then pulls me back. I stop assessing. I start valuing this thing for what it is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're saying something that is so important, which is when we get into assessment, there's a difference between discernment and judgment. And so often assessment becomes about judgment and criticism and the paradigm of right and wrong which is very different than discernment and differentiation. And, you know, I want to say about our root, because I, this for me is the heart of what Jungian psychology talks about as individuation and what the, um, what Christianity calls incarnation is that our root is in our body. That's how we access it. And, and that if we keep looking for a root outside, so our root is in our deeper nature and our deeper, most unconscious nature makes itself known to us first and foremost in our body, through our body sensations, through our body impulses, through our body affects. And so if we're going to be all here, then we have to be aware of what's happening in our body and receiving whatever's going on in terms of sensations, emotions, affects that then give rise to images and thoughts and ideas. We have to receive that as information from the root <laughs> and honor that it's a communication that's important. It's telling us something. And if we aren't listening, you know, if I'm not aware let's just say of a little tension and I need to wiggle, or if I'm not aware of the sensation of excitement as we're talking, then I miss important communication from my larger self. 
And so a lot of times when people don't feel like they're all there, it is truly because they're living from the neck up. <laughs> they, they are not at all in touch with or listening or honoring what's coming up from the root of the body. So I, I'm really taken by this idea. Well, so, I mean, you're in a sense, I, it sounds like in a sense, you're talking about oneness, being, feeling a, a oneness. Yes. And I'm fascinated with two-ness. I'm fascinated <laughs> with, you know, what, what it means. Um, I mean, and this is kind of why I'm so fascinated with prosthetics, instruments, machines that that because I'm very aware that the harp has given voice to my fingers. Mm -hmm. These these that have no sound have sound, have incredible sound and have sound that can accompany my voice. So the two become one. Mm -hmm. the chimera or whatever it's called and so and 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 uh, and as you're speaking i also hear you talking about the larger well you didn't i'm i'm projecting the larger self the mere self the physical self the spiritual self and then i'm thinking also in music the harmony the rhythm yeah. the melody you know and it's it's that it you know <laughs> it's that 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 makes it, it fly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, absolutely. And, you know, one of Jung's central concepts was what he called the transcendent function, which he said, when we can hold the tension of the opposites, then, then a uniting third emerges. So the opposites of human being and heart are fingers and strings and something then emerges, the opposite of our head, and our body, the opposites of seeming matter and spirit, when we can hold, hold on to both. And then in the moment of full presence, just let go into right. the marriage, the right. Pinocchio, the union. So as you were speaking, I thought, I know because you just told me that you're developing exercises, you know, that you're gonna mm -hmm. be doing in your workshop. I'm curious, would you be willing to pull out one of those right now and as it might apply to a relationship with an instrument? Sure, yeah, because the very first, so let me just, a little history, and if you're interested, you can go to innerdivinespirit.com and find a link to the information page. But over six months, I'm gonna work with a sacred circle of, of people who who set intention to be more embodied around six essential embodiment practices. And these are practices that if we cultivate the practice, then again, when we're in situations we want more presence, it's there. So the body awareness exercise is seemingly very simple. It, it, it basically revolves around training yourself to observe what's going on. So let's just say I'm going to go sit and play with my harp. And I did this last night. We went to some friends and had a little Celtic jam. And um, so I took my harp and, you know, I'm often, I'm almost always playing with um, professional musicians because my husband's a professional musician or people who've been playing their instruments for 30, 40 years, 50 years. And, you know, I've been playing for none. So I always have to kind of, pull myself back in and say, okay, what I can do matters and it's beautiful as is. <clears throat> so with my body awareness, if I'm aware that I start to feel a little bit anxious or like a little ungrounded and that ungrounded anxious is connected to insecurity. If I am pick up the subtle nuances of that, then I can breathe deep and just comfort myself and say, you know what? Yes, I don't have their skill set and I make a difference and I can call up my memory of the positive feedback they've given me and the welcoming that ha they have and they, how they always tell me how much they enjoy the heart when I'm there. I can call those things up to balance that 
negative that's coming up. If I'm not aware of that subtle sensation in my body of getting ungrounded and anxious because of the insecurity set off by all this train of thought, I mean, we could track it on out, then the only way it's going to get my attention is if it gets bigger, which means then I start to get myself in a little mess and I really am not going to get the strings I want to get on the heart. So the body awareness allows me to see that and choose to respond to it in a way that's compassionate. We can even take it to technique. You know, we talk a lot with the, in the harp and I think other instruments with the chord are the same about hand shape. And if you learn the basic hand shapes for the harp, basically your fingers create what we might call muscle memory or we might have kinesthetic memory where there is some body awareness that goes on even when our conscious mind is not paying sole attention to it. That other consciousness that we are is. So that's part of the value of body awareness, because if I have no sense of the shape of my hand when I'm going to place it on the string, then the odds I'm going to hit the strings I want to hit decreases. So yeah, I'm uh, as you're as you're saying this. I'm also thinking. I was looking at through uh, some of our other episodes, and one of them was play below your skill level. You know mm. why play below your skill level? And as you're speaking, I, I noticed that one of the things that I think disconnects us from the instrument or disconnects us for whatever we're doing is when we're trying to do something that we can't do. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, that's how we kind of challenge ourselves by pushing the envelope. But we we often forget or haven't learned the power and the beauty of doing what we can do. And as you were speaking, I was thinking, well, there's room for everyone in music. Yes. And this was is is graphically became graphically clear to me when I started orchestrating, writing for orchestra, because if I was writing a line, like say I was writing this line, I was writing something like that. The oboes might play that or the flutes might play that, but the bass wasn't playing that. The bass right. was playing, you know. And if you were to look at it and you would just say like, what's with the basses? <laughs> They're hardly playing anything. They're playing their role and they're playing something they can play. And I think that I just want to see what, what did I write here? I was writing as you were speaking, there's room for all of us. And, and I think that a lot of times when we were, when we're like, it's happened to me all the time when I'm running, I'm out running and like people are passing me left and right. And, and, and I'm like, well, little do they know that I didn't sleep well last night or like I go off on something rather than my running has nothing to do with anyone else. And it's only when I can come back to why am I running? Can I feel my footfalls? Can I feel my connection with the earth? Can I feel my breathing? Can I stop trying to get better right. and get more connected to what I'm doing? And I think that this happens a lot with instruments, you know, we, we think that it is not enough to play and listen to it and feel how it fits. And maybe we try it up higher and see what it's like. We feel like, well, that's just, we're not doing enough when in fact we're actually being part of something. Yes. Yes. In fact, last night I was remembering the very first master class that I did with you a long, long time ago. And you said to me, when I go to the jams, just play one chord that you're, you said to me, all you have to do is pick one chord and you listen for that chord. And right. the time you jump in when it comes, yeah. like, that's and, my um, I thought about you last night and, um, and when I was doing that on some of the tunes and then I was aware of how, now, sometimes when I don't know tunes, I can actually get a second chord and I can do two chords. And sometimes I even can throw in a third one. <laughs> That's 300% more. Yeah. But I, you know, I, I do think, and I think this is true again about 
being all in the moment and our presence is that this our sense of presence is something that develops over time as we become more able to have conscious awareness of where our energies are so that we can pull them back into this moment. And in terms of where am I when I'm not all there, you are still all there in your energy field. But what's missing is a consciousness of all those energies in one place, the still point, the mirrorness, the center point that is within us. And that cultivating that attitude and belief and then having practices like the four roadmap and jazz or the essential embodiment practices allows us when we want our presence fully in one place to have consciousness of it. I, 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 and, and that in a, and, and in a way that allows us to just relax and be where we are. Yeah. Part of what I'm hearing in, in what you're saying is, is, Ultimately, we're looking for greater coordination or in, incorpor incorporation. incorporation. And when we are not feeling where, <clears throat> that we're where we are, that we, we can bring in anyone. Like you have these, you're working with four principles. Dreams of Passion works with seven principles. This summer, I'm working with four principles. Mm -hmm. So we can, we can bring from any one of those and then it sounds, well, it sounds, I actually like to think how can the people who are going to be working with me this summer bring in the principles that you're talking about too, yeah. because I have a feeling that they will um, give not just power, but focus and even serenity or, or awareness <clears throat> to the skills that people are learning the harmony, the, you know, melodic improv, those things. And so, but, but if like, if I had to recap um, what I've learned here today, it's there's a mirror me, which I can always connect with. And that's mm -hmm. like that single note. I can always connect with that single note. There's this also this, you know, the, the gaseous, hopefully not. Well, depending on how you look at it. Anyway, the other, other format of me. And then there's the coordination of all these beautiful, different, you know, spirit, thinking, body, running, you know, mm -hmm. what all the different skills and they're not just skills. And then how do I incorporate them? And at any moment that I feel unincorporated, I can focus on any one of them to bring me back into that center. And then I can start bringing in another. And when I fall off, come on back. Absolutely. I mean, that is such a beautiful summary because when we have these practices, these tools, these understandings, these roadmaps, whatever word we want to put on it, when we have consciousness of that, then in the moment we start to fill ourselves out here, distract when we want to be here, then we have something to hold on to to pull us back. And I want to close by saying, and that mirror you is the largesse that holds everything. That um, that that spark has everything that that develops from there. So when we do connect with our nearness, the still point within, we are connecting to the larger self we are. Right. I Yes, I love that. I love that we can learn all these skills and it's great. You know, as a musician, it's mm -hmm. great to learn all these. And the whole point of connecting with all these skills is just to be able to to connect to the thing we could always do if only we could have. That's which, right. Which, which is to just express ourselves. But these are all ways, in a sense, not of adding complexity, 
but of opening up different ways to get connection. Yeah, and we might think of it that divine spark in us needs pathways. So these things open up pathways. You know, um, another way I like to think about it is the spark needs a bit conduit. So all of what you teach, the embodiment practices analysis helps make a bigger road out. So then there's more, there, there's a larger place for the spirit we are, the spark we are to express in the world, whether it's expressing in our conversation or expressing at our instrument. Yeah. And it's funny because I noticed that um, as I started to develop all kinds of skills as a harpist and I got more and more and more and more and more skilled. And then I would go and I would do a show and I would realize that the simplest tune that I did was the one that <laughs> impacted the audience the most. Um, and I was like, what are you telling me that I had all the skills I needed? And so why didn't I just stick with those skills? And yet it, it, it's interesting because exploring other things can often bring us back to that simplicity. We may not use all that stuff in what we're expressing. It's fun for us, it opens up our brains. And then if we can connect with that presence and be with that presence and not have to prove it to ourselves or others, we come back to the moment of when it's, when it's, when it's, when it, when we're expressing in the moment who we are yes. and, and, and what we alone can express even if we don't know what it is. Yes. Yes. That's exactly right. Yeah. Ah, well, I feel more present. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. And I do too. This has been really great. Yeah. Great. Well, I look forward to our next conversation yes. with Jung at Harp and Kathleen from that moment of reaching into your glove compartment to now. Thank you so much for these wonderful conversations. And I love that we're, that we're getting to share them and that they're you know, that others are now becoming part of part of that conversation. So thank you, everyone, for every single part you play in this. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.